You may be struggling with one sin or the other. You may be battling with addiction. And at this point, you may be feeling so bad that why me? Some people are even depressed because they feel, I don't want to do this again. But before you know it, you are back committing the same sin and it's like you are crucified, you are judged, you live in guilt. This video is for you. Don't skip a minute or a second of this video. If you do, then you've given the devil the chance to keep you in that oppression, in that sin you've been battling with. Alright, so how do I overcome lust and temptation? I know that is the question that brought you here. The first thing you need to do is to run from temptation. Alright? Run from temptation. Flee fornication. Now, we are going to be looking at the story of Joseph in the Bible. If you read the book of Genesis, the Bible says, Potiphar's wife came to Joseph and offered herself to him. But Joseph looked at this woman and said, I cannot do such wickedness against my master what did joseph do did he stand did he stay did he lie down with the woman no he ran so to be able to overcome temptation and lust the first thing you need to do is not to trust your flesh you need to run do everything in your capacity to flee from any environment that tempts you. All right. Number two, the second thing you need to do if you must overcome temptation and lust is to pray and ask God for grace. The book of Luke 22 verse 40 says, pray that you may not enter into temptation. You pray and ask God for grace. Listen, there's nobody that tells you today, I don't commit so, so, so sin, I don't do this, that does that on his own. There is an enabling factor. There is the grace factor that God has to give you the grace to be able to say no to sin. Now, whether you like it or not, you need to bear in mind that the flesh loves sin. The flesh, the old man in you, desires sin. So to be able to overcome, you need to pray to overcome temptation and lust. All right? So the third thing you are going to do if you must overcome temptation and lust is that you must have your eyes, your ears, and your heart. You must learn to have your ears, your eyes, and your heart. Now, this is what I mean by that. If you are a man and you feel, whenever you see a lady, you want to go in with them. You want to, whenever you see a guy, you want to go in with them. And you know that that is your weakness. You know, sin begins from sight. What you don't want, you don't watch, all right? So look at what happened to Eve in, in Eden. Eve saw the fruit and saw that it was good for fruit. If she did not look at it, she won't consider it in it. Then Lucifer, I mean Satan, spoke to her, convinced her. It was the ears she used to hear the eyes she used to see and the heart was able to process what the eyes and the ears sent to the heart. So, starve your eyes, starve your ears and starve your heart. The, the, you know, if you do that, it will help you to overcome temptation and loss because any act of sin committed by man since the inception of the world first began from eye, ear, and the heart. The heart is the place where the conclusion is made. The decision is made. And like I said earlier, it begins from your eyes and your ears. So how can I overcome temptation and lust? Number four, get filled with scripture. Look at what David said in the Bible. He said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. There's a place for God's word in your spirit. There's a place for scripture. You need to feed your spirit with it. It will help you to overcome temptation and lust. And I'm going to give you an instance. Jesus was fasting for 40 days, 40 nights, and he was tempted. What happened? Satan came. 
and said, If you are the Son of God, turn this stone to bread. And Jesus replied with what? Not with words of his, of his mother, not with words of, of Joseph. He replied with words of the Lord, that is scripture. Jesus quoted and said that man shall not live by bread alone, by, by, the, by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So he knew it. It was the scripture that came from him. Even when the devil asked him to jump from that place, he said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So to be able to overcome lust and temptation, you must feed your spirit with scripture because that is what God is going to be using to guide you if you are tempted, if you are faced with temptation. Now, don't forget, temptation on its own is not a sin. What you do, your reaction or your action during temptation is what make it either a sin or not a sin. Anyone can be tempted. Jesus was tempted, but he did not sin. He so he did not fall for it. So, but Adam and Eve they fell. So it depends on the level of scripture that is in your spirit. If you have enough of God's word, you are having enough of light, and there's no way darkness will be able to overpower you. All right. The next thing you need to do if you must overcome lust and temptation, is to disconnect from those who lure you into sin. Relationship. Bad communication corrupt good manner. So you must do everything in your capacity to disconnect from people who are capable of convincing you into sin. There are people who got married, they were not cheating, but they started relating with people who cheat on their spouses and they began to cheat. So, Two cannot work together except they agree. If you know and you notice that there are people, whenever you hang around them, because of their lifestyle, they influence you, they encourage you to do what they do, to commit the sin they commit. The first thing you need to do is to disconnect totally from them. If you do that, you are helping yourself to overcome temptation and lust. The last one is this. A child who is learning how to walk, that keeps falling even when he has grown, won't be given privileges that are meant for sons. So this means that you need to bear in mind, like the scripture rightly says, that as long as the heir to the throne is a child, he's not different from slave. So bearing in, in your heart that as long as you keep falling into that temptation over and over again, it's like someone who is writing an exam, you are supposed to be promoted to class 2, but you keep failing at class 1. What happens? You remain there. There are things God won't give to you until you mature spiritually. And one of the proofs that you've matured spiritually is that you'll be able to overcome temptation. You'll be able to say no to some certain things. Do you know that as a child, when you follow your parents somewhere, people give you food, you collect food from everybody you eat as a two-year-old child. But as as soon as you grow, you become adult. When people give you food, it's not everybody that gives you food you take. Because you have discretion, you are able to know I shouldn't eat from everyone. So when you grow spiritually, it's going to have impact on your spiritual maturity. It will help you to overcome sin. It will help you to overcome lust. You, you know there are things I shouldn't look, I, I shouldn't see. There are communication I should not engage. There are people you should not relay with. Now, I want to say this, that if you grow spiritually, one of the proofs that you've grown is that it will affect your relationship. There are people that you will not, there are companies you will no longer be, be comfortable with. There are friends you will no longer like to keep because your thinking, the philosophy, your ideology has changed and the scripture is already in your heart. I believe you've really found value value in this video and i want you to subscribe to my youtube channel i hope and i trust god to drop more videos that will edify and build your faith